Hey After Buzzers, it's Ali Nasta. And Jay Ellis, and we're here at the 20th Annual GLAAD Awards. And we cannot wait to talk to some of the amazing people that are a part of the LGBTQ community. This is the 28th annual event, so it's going to be a great one. Stick around. First of all, Tommy, part of 13 Reasons Why yes, on Netflix. Yes, I play Ryan Shaver. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the project. How'd you get involved? Yeah, I mean, I auditioned for the project. I saw the script. I fell in love with it. I immediately felt like I had to be on it. Um, I feel like it's one of the most honest, truthful portrayals of high school life, mm -hmm. at least in America. And there was a role of, you know, the gay kid outcast who writes poetry and is kind of the advocate of the high school. And I was like, I like really, really need to play that part. What part of Ryan did you, were you able to put from your life into Ryan? I mean, I definitely felt like an outcast in high school. I grew up in Atlanta, and although I had accepting parents, there were a lot of bullies through elementary and middle school, and also in high school, and I never really felt a part of, and I had this desire just to like leave and move to New York, because I felt like New York was a safe space for me. And I feel like that's definitely Ryan's feeling in his school, is he kind of just feels like the only one, this terminal uniqueness, and this need to sort of get out, and that's kind of his goal throughout throughout the show. Great. Now, I'm a fan of the, the novel of the same name. Ha were you familiar with the source material? I was after my first audition, I read the book, and I have cousins who actually, like the book, they say saved their lives, and so it was really meaningful to talk to them about it once I got cast, and I think the show does a really good job of using that as a sort of skeleton and then just expanding on it. I was just going to say, how did they, how did they uh, span that into, is it, how many episodes do we have going this We have 13, so there's like an episode per tape, which is really great. I mean, one of the ways they expanded on it is Ryan isn't explicitly gay or straight in the book. They added some relationships for me with another character. Um, they added backstory to a lot of these sort of micro characters. You're not just seeing it from Clay's perspective, but you're really getting to see the whole world that we live in and how suicide truly affects every single person, whether you knew that person or not. Mm -hmm. And being on Netflix, how do you think that affected how the show was created? I think Netflix was the perfect platform for it because we had opportunity not to be censored. Mm -hmm. I think if we had gone to a bigger network, we would have been censored in what we can say and what we do. And I think the best part about the show and I think what people respond to and what I've heard in reviews as well is it's like high schoolers watching what actual high schoolers do. Yeah. And that's like curse and drink and there's sexual abuse and there's a lot of tragedy and bullying, but there's also a lot of love and hope and miscommunication and, and finding ways to communicate and all of that stuff sort of mixed together. And it's not super glossy and it's not super pretty. And for us, it's just that Netflix just let us kind of be. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect time for this kind of show, yeah. guys. And I'm, I'm really hoping that it catches and I'm excited for you, Tommy. Sure. I'm going to be one so of the viewers. So. Yes, please watch. Yeah. It's out now. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, nice to meet you. You too.